lovelies welcome back to my channel my name is Tia aka teacup simmer and this is another new series in niche and we are going to be playing the wolf pack challenge you guys in this niche update version 1.1.7 this is a buggy update I will leave links in the description box below to all the information about joining the tester branch and all of the updates that have been going on with niche if you guys want to know about those um, but this challenge I got from Bebop who's on YouTube I can definitely like link you guys to her channel below as well but I made a little a few few tweaks to this challenge but I was super excited to try it out since you guys voted for it on our community poll definitely check out the community tab on our YouTube channel you guys it's where I post a lot of polls I post a lot of sneak peeks I post a lot of updates about what's going on with moi so I hope you guys are as excited as I am the wolfback challenge pretty much says that we start a tribe with the intention of it being a wolf pack with only one mated pair and the pack made up mostly of their children and the, the occasional wanderer that tends to scuttle in. So currently what our story says is that this pack, I'm going to say, is based off of our long ago lost mountain tribe, the Zephyrin tribe, the tribe of the West Wind, who worshipped the goddess Zephra. A long time ago when the ne when the niche mountain update first came out you guys I did a mountain tribe and it was the Zephyrin tribe and they had a tradition of having queens and kings of purple eyes and purplish and black ram horns. They always had a lot of strength to them. They always wanted to keep moving, but they tended to have a tendency to have way too many babies. And they always had too many creatures coming in and out of the tribe and a lot of different bloodlines fighting for power. It was a very, very interesting series. I definitely encourage you guys to check that out. Link in the description box below. But I wanted to kind of revive that tribe. I absolutely adored their lore and I adored the creatures in that tribe. So Zephra is a reincarnation of one of our oldest queens in um, in our Zephyrin tribe. And so she has those beautiful purple eyes, those garnet and purplish ram horns, the cream body and those very striking black stripes. And she is a very haughty like her ancestors. And she was groomed along with her mate, um, Rakesh, who is also being named in honor of our great shaman back way back when, who was our first shaman in the Zephyrin tribe. But we're not gonna have shamans in this wolf pack, but I did adore Rakesh's love of stories and his um looking to the future and he also adored babies and I figured this little one Rakesh would also fall into that line of thinking he's going to be a little bit um less aggressive than his mate and he's going to be the one taking care of a lot of the children and making sure everyone has the food and she's going to be the very ambitious one and very um very snooty about the bloodlines and about making sure that her children are the ones that end up inheriting the pack which is why we're doing a wolf pack challenge um i will leave links to the rules in the description box below but this is going to be more of like a the rules are going to be very squishy on this on this one because it's going to be based off of what works and what doesn't it's tends to be a little bit weird because we end up having a really tiny tribe. I put a limit on the tribe to be 20 nichelings, but I don't really think we're going to need that. Every time I've tested this, I've only gotten up to maybe 11 to 15 nichelings as a cap, mostly because it just takes a long time to have a lot of that many babies. But these two are going to be, what we're going to say is that they are the only ones that finally made it to the mountains. The Zephyrin tribe were always trying to get to the mountains, you guys, and so unfortunately they never made it. Uh, the last episode they were still trying, looking for those snowy mountain ports. So they're saying these guys were groomed from a young age. The tribe finally found those mountain ports and they sent these two to claim the mountains. And that is what they intend to do. They intend to get all of those mountain genes that we usually wanted previously and see if we can get all of those genes locked away in our genetics and keep our beautiful 
garnet um, ram horns and purple eyes. Not to say that we have to keep the garnet ram horns, but the ram horns and the purple eyes are considered blessings from the goddess to say that these creatures are the ones that are meant to be rulers of the tribe. And so we're going to try and make sure that the bloodlines stay as pure as possible while we get these genes into the genetics. And hopefully we'll be the rulers of the mountains by the end of this series. No promises though, because it looks like we don't even have another mountain port listed on this on this map so we may end up having to go to the jungles or to the grasslands for a hot second just before we can find another snowy mountain a uh, snowy mountain island so that's basically the backstory you guys we have our quiet storyteller and our haughty princess who are going to be the ones starting our pack today and of course I'm going to kind of explain the rules as we go but they're not really necessary at the moment since I don't really feel like doing a huge rule dump that's not I don't I'm, I'm I don't really want to <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where it is. I just don't want to. Um, so if you guys want to know, you guys can look those look at those down below and I'll kind of explain them as they're relevant. So right now, Zephra and Rakesh have finally gotten to the mountain. They're going to want to set themselves up. We started off with a regular an amount of food and nesting material that Nishlings start off with. I didn't mess with those when we did the sandbox mode, but you can make edits to that thanks to the newer updates. But I do want to see if we can get her settled in to, ooh, there's a nest right next to a bunny burrow. Actually, that's actually very, very helpful. We don't have anyone that can pick up these poison berries. So I think Rakesh will kind of stick away from them, but I think Zephyr might like this nest for their first child. So that's a possibility. It's very well guarded on two sides at the very least and since she's very strong she has five strength she's gonna she's not gonna be too worried about having any creatures kind of jump up on her at any point in time there is a termite mound <laughs> super close to the nest oh my goodness and there's there's another berry bush and i think rakesh will smell that and see if he can sneak over there while zephyr kind of expands the territory a bit so we're gonna skip the day and see what kind of happens. They may want to pull this creature out after they have their first couple kids. Um, do you think she can get that? There she goes. So she'll probably pick that up and she'll go for the meat first. So, cause the coconut will stay there. She probably is worried about food being scarce for her children. She's going to send Rakesh out to go start looking for that other berry bush. Here it is. And he's very good at collecting, so he's gonna have a lot of fun picking up those berries. And Zephyr is gonna try and, try and kind of get rid of all this grass, make sure that the area is safe enough for her to start having some kids in it. I don't know if she's gonna want to start right now. She does have to wait two days before she can have her kids, and I've set up her gestation period to be three days so that she has she can have children on her third day. So technically, if she got pregnant today, she wouldn't be able to have her baby until day three. Um, we well, she can't now, but I'm just mean in general. So the idea is that sh we're going to keep our pack very small, and that the Zephyrin tribe has evolved to have sh longer gestation periods to make sure that they take care of their children long for. Um, better. There it is. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. So let's skip the day and see if we can pick up some more food. Zephyr will want to keep that grass there since she wants to keep her baby safe. The grass will help her stay camouflaged. She's very strategic. I think she appreciates the ability to keep track of her surroundings, make sure her children are safe. She has spent most of her life training for this to be able to keep the new tribe, the new, um, the new pack um, to be her ward, to be the thing that she focuses on the most. So she has a lot of ambitions and she has a lot of goals for her potential children, which is why she stayed in the nest and kind of is basically just tidying up the area. Rakesh is probably gonna come back and help clear out this space but we're not going to open up this yet because the idea is that the only ones that can rule the pack 
are their children, their direct descendants. So the entire family line is going to directly come from Zephra and her children. But the problem is that we don't know what her children's genes are going to be, who's going to be the strongest, who's going to have the better, um, who's going to be the better candidate to be the next alphas. And that's what we have to look at because depending on who gets to be the next alpha depends on whether or not this individual ends up being mating material or ends up becoming just a random wanderer that becomes an omega in the pack who doesn't really get to breed. So we want to include these really, um, ancient genes into the main family line but if they don't match up with the person who is supposed to be the next pack leader then we're just stuck waiting for a new wanderer to be the one to become the mate of the next alpha and i think zephyr would be fine with the way the area looks now so we'll have her mate with Rakesh and hopefully she'll feel better about having her baby in the next couple days Let's sniff around, make sure there aren't any problems. Ooh, there's a mole over there, but I don't think she'll want to go all the way over there. She might end up getting hit by a coconut. Um, let's see. Let's have Rakesh come this way. We'll start exploring, pick up these berries, clear out this grass. Um, let's have her get rid of this bush. I think it's kind of in the way. I don't think she'll be able to, it, I don't think that protection is necessary. I think the protection from this side will help to at least have it blocked on one area. So let's see, oop, there's another bunny. So let's put this here. She's gonna get the food. Let's see, is there any, let's have Rakesh come over here and swipe at that mole so he can pick up some more food for his soon to be children. I don't think she's gonna have the baby this time. Yeah, I don't know, it's possible. I didn't keep track of the count. <laughs> this is why this is, this is testing. This is why this is a testing stage. Yeah, there we go. So she was going to have a baby on this turn. We have a new prince, you guys. Oh my gosh, he's so tiny. Oh my. <laughs> he looks so cute, the little thingy. I didn't even know that they did that. Yeah, they made it different. They made it like a full on picture of him. That's super cute. Roro, you look adorable. Let's check you out. Aw, you are a little prince. Uh, a little Zephyrin, a little Zephyrin prince. Oh, I'm so happy. He's just so cute. Okay, so he has C and B, good fertility. They both started off with pretty good fertility. The Zephyrin tribe has very good genes, but the idea is that as we start bringing in new wanderers and bringing in um, individuals that are going to end up diluting the bloodline a bit. We're going to try and make sure we can keep those very distinctive traits, those violet eyes and the claws and the ram horns very prominent in the family line. So Roro, we're going to have to rename you. And I'm trying to go back to some of our older niche names. We had a lot of um, niche names that I really adored back when we first started. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go with Ahiga, which in according to our list means he fights. So I think that's a good name for our first male who's going to be a potential ruler of the pack. So we're going to add that blue icon and he's going to be a beta until it's decided about who's going to become the next mated pair. The next mated pair, we have to make them alphas now that I remember that I did that. So the next mated pair are going to become alphas and they're going to be the ones that have all the children. But all of the children that they have that aren't chosen or all of their siblings of the ones that aren't chosen are, are still gonna stay betas and they're still going to be part of the pack unless they decide to leave. So Ahiga is a cute little thing. So we'll have Zahira. There's a bluebird. Oh no. 
Zephyr will not like that at all. She does not appreciate bluebirds at all. So we will stay super close to the baby. Rakesh will probably pick up some of those berries, all that food, and come back to meet his son. Oh, they're so cute. They look so much alike. Rakesh, you and your boy. Ah, ah. Ahika looks like he's going to be very fierce like his mother. He has a claw like her and he has his father's dots. So his fighting, I think, is going to be very strong. He's going to be a very high contender for the next alpha of the pack. Consider technically, Zephyr is the one that's in charge when it comes to who's going to who's the main alpha. Rakesh doesn't necessarily fight her on that. I think he just wants to make sure that his family is going to be taken care of. He comes from the family line of the Zephyrin tribe that is a lot more subdued, which is a reason why he's named after Rakesh instead of one of our more um, imposing kings. We had a lot of dark kings at a one point in time in the Zephyrin tribe, but I think Zephra comes from a very aggressive family line, which is why she's she she took the she took the reins on this one. So let's see, Ahiga. I don't know if we're gonna want to move you. I think we're gonna have maybe a couple more babies before we start exploring the rest of the island. Maybe over here, we might send you off with your dad to start looking at some of the other food sources and Zephyr is going to stay here near the nest. Let's skip the day. So let's have Zephyr come over here and she's gonna start picking up some more coconuts, I think. And let's have Ahiga come this way and Rakesh start showing him how to pick up berries and showing him what poison berries not to pick up, kind of giving him some information about the island that he's learned so far since they're all still very new to this area. It's going to be their home and they definitely want to take care of it, but I don't think that it's going to be easy for them to get used to not having so many other creatures around since the Zephyrin tribe was known for being very large. So let's skip this today. Ooh, Ahiga, you are a large one. Like he's huge. Like he's so. Big. I, I will forget how big body makes makes teenagers look so large. They look so big. So he's gonna have a blue gem. Let's put his mother right here. Oh, there's so there's a lot of bunnies running around. Um, let's have Rakesh show her his son how to sniff around. There are. There are some arctic ram foxes. So I think that's something that Zephyr's going to smell and she's gonna consider it a threat to her children. So we're gonna send these ones over to start doing some attacks. Ahiga is probably gonna just sharpen his claws on this thing. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna know what to do with it, but hopefully these two will be able to kind of take out some of these foxes that Zephyr will find um, a danger to her, her potential children. Let's see. Let's see. How much strength does he have? He has three. How long does this have? Seven days. So he could do two swipes on it. Ahiga could probably get at these two. He'd probably want to test out his claws. His name does mean he fights, so he's definitely going to be interested to see what he can do to protect his family. And I think this is definitely going to be the personality of our pack. The pack is going to be very aggressive with how strong they are there on on average, so aside from Rakesh, I'm expecting the tribe to have a lot of at least five strength, if not four or three. So they're definitely going to be aggressive about protecting their nesting areas, protesting their, protecting their food sources. So this is something you guys can let me know what you think about the pack when we start to expand it. I think we're going to have Zephyr have her last baby or her next baby and kind of see what happens with the two males fighting off the Arctic Ram Foxes to see if the pack will have their first victory.
Okay, so it doesn't look like they attacked. So it has six days left. Let's have Rakesh take it out. And then Ahiga. Whoa! Whoa! And we have a blind wanderer with K and B immunity. We have B, but we don't have K. And it doesn't look like Zephyr's ready to have her baby yet. I'm Like I said, I haven't been counting. I should have, but let's put her down here and pick up those coconuts for a second. Let's see, how much space does this one have? It has nine. So Ahiga has come up against an entire pack of Arctic Ram Foxes. So I wonder what these two will do. It might be our first real battle of of the pack. And Zephyr is over here just quietly picking up quietly picking up coconuts. Cause she sent her her mate and her first child into battle, but I feel like she's not gonna be too concerned. She's probably going to consider it their duty to protect the pack and the growing pack to make sure that they fight everyone and new pre new is actually potentially an interesting addition to the pack if he doesn't get attacked um he doesn't have any genes that we particularly want he is definitely has blind eyes he has webbed hind legs he has hemophilia but he does have that K immunity gene. He has peacock tail. He has savanna horns in there. So he may be an interesting creature to add to the pack, but he has joined pack territory. So it's a possibility that we may or may not, in like we may or may not invite him. We may start including some random roles for the pack to see if Zephra is more likely to say, have someone join or just to attack them until they leave the territory so that may be something we'll include you guys can let me know down in the comments below i hope you guys are enjoying this series i'm super excited to keep it going it looks like the pack has gotten themselves into a little bit of trouble but hopefully the west wind wolves which is what i'm calling them i actually absolutely adore that name west wind wolves will be able to figure out what to do with a pack of archigram foxes, a wanderer in their territory, and Zephra expecting the next pack member. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and please subscribe if you really love me. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!